Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, so you can see my screen, right? Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we're gonna be looking at um, data modeling. Uh, modeling actually. But we're gonna start off with ML ops. So um, so ML ops means uh, it's just uh, DevOps for machine learning. So it stands for uh, machine learning operations. So it's uh, it's a process from development to production of uh, ML projects. So it incorporates these old uh, components. Uh, just as the DevOps uh, operations for their development. Uh, and the, the main benefit is uh, for efficient model building, deployment, and monitoring. And while you're monitoring it, you're also going to be uh, doing some maintenance on it. So it's, it's not just a linear process, it's more of a a circular process, so it's a repetition. So you're gonna build, deploy, you're gonna monitor it, you're gonna maintain it, and so on. So it's uh, emphasizes collaboration and automation to improve uh, the efficiency and reliability of uh, machine learning systems. So uh, the benefits are efficiency. So you can build uh, once you build your pipeline, you can. Uh, it's going to be more efficient and faster. So it's easier to build uh, models with higher quality and uh, with faster deployment. And they are scalable because uh, there is a version control and you can oversee, control, and manage uh, all your models at once. And it also reduces the risks. So, so for regulation, drift check, transparency, and everything. So uh, we have a couple of components of uh, MLOps. So the key components are uh, the data pipeline. So it includes uh, processing, which is cleaning. Uh, it's the ingestion means it may include um, uh, get, getting your data, pre-processing means cleaning it, and feature engineering means extracting your features that you are going to be using in your uh, uh, model. And then you're going to have model uh, development. So you're going to start with training it, you're going to have validation, and you're going to have, uh, you're going to be tuning it just uh, to make it just to bring it as to, as, uh, to your liking, right? So uh, so training, validation, and tuning. So after that, after that, you're gonna deploy it and monitor it. So these are the key components of uh, MLOps. So the best practices of uh, machine learning operations are, as we have seen, the first thing you're gonna do is prepare the data. So you're going to have a pipeline for pre-processing and feature extraction, and then uh, the model training. So you're going to be selecting the appropriate model that you're going to use for this project or, or a, any project and so on. You're going to have experiments. You're, you're going to do some experiments and find the best optimal model. And then you're going to deploy it. When you are deploying it, it's uh, it's better to use uh, containers uh, like Docker's and others because it consists of model serving uh, and scaling. Anyone can uh, redo your work without any uh, errors and then monitoring it and uh, governing it are the best practices. So I know I'm moving fast because I'm planning um, we have uh, two examples. Uh, that, that's why, but if you have any question, you, you can ask. Are there any questions? Okay, Abraham uh, doesn't have any. What about the others? <laughs> uh, 
Okay, I'm going to take it up here, yes. So, so uh, I wanted to look at uh, this well-known uh, data mining process, uh, this framework that is this methodology that's used in data mining. So it's called uh, CRISP-DM or uh, cross industry standard process for data mining. So you can also use this in any ML projects because uh, they have a lot in common. Uh, this is what I used to use. So uh, it's it provides a structured uh, approach to planning, executing, and deploying a data mining solution. So let's take a look at the phases. So uh, I think it's better if you uh, try this methodology in your project because it gives you some kind of uh, structure. So the first thing you should do uh, whenever you are starting on a ML project or any project is understand the business, right? So understanding the business uh, means understanding the project objective and requirements. So uh, for instance, you're gonna, you are working on telecom data. So what's the business understanding? So what is the objective what am i trying to achieve and what are the requirements of this business so uh, what's what's being provided might not be enough so you have to go and look on the web so after you understand uh, the objective of this um, of your project or the business the next thing you're gonna do is uh, so the next thing is collecting the data, but since you already have the data, the next thing you're gonna do is understanding the data. So understanding the data starts from collecting it and goes through exploring it, right? So exploring the data means uh, like going through each column and uh, finding out what they stand for, right? Uh, so yeah, so gain insights, this means uh, doing EDAs, uh, so EDAs, um, very important for MLS, ML jobs. So yeah, uh, after that, after you understand the data, after you see the distribution, how it's distributed and so, the next thing you're gonna do is prepare the data. So uh, preparing the data includes uh, cleaning it, transforming and selecting relevant features. So um, cleaning means you may have uh, non-values, non-existent values or you may have some messy data. So the first thing you should do is uh, come up with a strategy of uh, how to handle this uh, messy data, right? So you're gonna be doing uh, the cleaning the ADAs. You may you may use uh, forward feeling, backward feeling. You may use uh, mean average or any. But uh, when I say anything. Uh, you're not going to just use uh, the thing that just uh, pops up in your mind, right? So you're going to do the analysis. So the analysis might be, um, you may see the uh, distribution. So it's, if it is normally distributed, is it uh, like tilted to the left or to the right? So these things may have influence on the choice of the way you are going to feel the non-value of your data while cleaning it, right? So that's the one thing you're gonna do. And transforming might mean, uh, one example of transforming could be, uh, you might have categorical values and you may need to change these categorical values into numerical values, right? So you may use, uh, you may have to use uh, encoders just to transform this into uh, numerical values or maybe the, values of one column and the other might vary a lot and this could have uh, an impact on your results so you may need to use min max scalar or nor normalizer so yeah so this is just the transforming and the selecting relevant feature means uh, not all features that are provided by the data team are ne necessary for your project right I think you already have seen that while doing your projects. So just selecting the ones that you want, uh, 
or that are required for this project is also included in the data preparation. So after the data is cleaned, transformed, and uh, all the necessary or relevant features are extracted, the next thing you're going to do is uh, building a model. So modeling uh, consists of just building and evaluating models uh, using the appropriate techniques. So still here, you may use, uh, you have a lot of models. So choosing the right one, uh, I can, uh, I think, yeah, there are, there are ways you can do this, um, but just un by understanding your data and by understanding what you're going to do, you can choose uh, the right type of model and then uh, the evaluating, so assessing the model performance and validating it against the business objective. So uh, did, this model, did the results you got from this model uh, help achieve the business objective? Is the next question you're gonna ask. So if that yes, you're gonna go with deployment. If that's a no, you're gonna go back to the modeling part. So this is just a highlight of the crisp DM phases. Um, are there any questions here? Uh, okay, no questions. Okay. Okay. The so the modeling for the modeling, it consists of the first thing you're gonna do is uh, so which model you are going to consider. So you have a regression classification. Um, so you have a lot of models. So just choosing the right kind of model, and then uh, split the, your data set into train and test. So you're gonna use this uh, test. Uh, data set for close validation and then build and train the model based on your uh, trained data set and assess the model uh, the model's performance so this is uh, just a highlight of uh, the models uh, of how you can model and uh, about MLOps. so are there any questions i know i'm i was a bit fast but if there are any questions, I can go back. So no questions. Okay. Only Abraham is active. <laughs> Thank you, Abraham. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's go to the... So I got um, two uh, examples that we can work on so both of these examples are from Kaggle so the you can find the data sets there and you can practice them if you want so the first one is uh, so I think most of you guys might might know it um, it's let me check um, Okay, we are on the same page. So, yeah. Um, so this is for the house data. So, uh, yeah, it's a it was a competition. So it's a very known uh, competition for especially for beginner ML engineers or someone lo lo looking to start in the data science. So what it is is it's going to give you some features of a house. Uh, such as uh, the utilities, the neighborhood, and everything, the conditions, the build type. So it's just uh, everything about the house. So this is the build year. So when was it built, the roof type, and everything, everything you can imagine of. So at the last uh, column is uh, uh, the ceiling price, sorry how much it's sold. So the ceiling price is the last co component. So what you are expected to do is you're going to train your model by using this uh, data. I think it's it's not a lot, actually. I think it's around uh, 4,000 and so something data. So you're going to train your data with this uh, data set. And 
you're going to test or there, there is a test uh, data set where you are gi given all the components or all the features of a house and you're going to guess or you're going to predict uh, the selling price. So the selling price is not given here. So the condition and everything is listed here. So you're going to be working on uh, predicting the selling price based on the uh, features that's given about the house. So uh, just checking, uh, has anyone, uh, does any one of you know this challenge? Okay, Abraham, what about the rest? Uh, okay uh, okay let's move on so so yeah uh, so the first thing uh, you're gonna do is clean the data right so uh, the first step is going to be cleaning the data um, so this is just loading the data and you as you can see here 6.62% uh, of uh, the data is non-value or missing so uh, here is where uh, uh, the data understanding comes in so you need to understand the data like go through each column and find out what it means so uh, for some columns or for some features non-value may mean zero right or for for others non-value may, may mean uh, non uh, like it's not available like for instance i think for your work there are some uh, columns uh, even though there are non-values they don't mean uh, non like non-existent they might mean zero right um, yeah so you're gonna you're gonna need to uh, find out what they mean and just come up with a strategy to uh, fix them, right? So uh, categorical values and numerical values of the table or the data has been extracted. So for instance, uh, Ali, so Ali, so some houses might not have it and uh, on the table, you might see zero, right? No, uh, non-value. So the non-value doesn't mean it needs to be imputed, right? You don't mean, uh, you, you you might not need to impute it. The houses might not have that feature, right? So it's better to impute zero than a value because that those houses might not have that value, right? Um, and so on, so fences, so some ha houses might not have a fence, so uh, it's not ideal just to uh, impute a value into fences, even though they don't have any, right? So this was what I was trying to tell you about earlier, so uh, like load frontage, they might not have it, they might ha have it, or uh, the person that's feeling the data might miss uh, or feeling them. So yeah, these are just a highlight of how you can understand your uh, data better. So uh, so for this, for the lot frontage, every house has some. So uh, it's assumed that the missing values are not missing. So just uh, they are missing because the when the data is collected there, there was a mistake or in the, or something like that so uh, for this project what i did was uh, just fill the load frontage value uh, by the mean or the average of the neighborhood so the average uh, the average load frontage of that neighborhood is going to be filled for the non value of that uh, ne neighborhoods load frontage. Um, it doesn't make sense, guys, or am I just talking to myself? Okay, Abraham, thank you. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Uh, okay, 
So yeah, so that's uh, how I dealt with this load frontage non-value. But for the others, uh, just fill the fill them with zero. Uh, and for some, for the electrical attributes, since it's just um, I think around three or four, yeah, just eight I think. Since it's just a little bit amount of numbers, I just dropped it for the electrical attributes because it's not clear. So the next thing I did was check the missing values and it's zero, so it's clean. So moving on to the prediction. So uh, so it's the training test uh, the data are lo loaded. And I did the same thing, the same training process for the test data, the data set, and just uh, used the same principles as I applied for the train. This is important because uh, if you apply a different me methodology for the test and the train, your uh, value may be biased. So yeah, that's why I did so. Um, this one get dummies is a uh, it's just a function in the uh, pandas uh, package and it's used to impute or to change the categorical values into numerical values you might also use a hotkey encoder and label encoders they are also similar but for a different use case so get dummies is just one of these um, methods that you can use. And then uh, you're gonna uh, just split your train uh, data sets into X and Y. So these are just, just the, the usual or the widely used way of using them. So Y means is what you are trying to predict. So the sale price and X is anything other than the sale price. So for this project, everything, uh, every features has been uh, used. So the next thing is just split. So I've, as I've mentioned, where I was uh, discussing about MLOps, you need to uh, split your data into train and test or download validation uh, data sets just to, to be used for validation. So here I just tried to use, uh, I just tried to compare uh, random forest regressor and uh, here you can see XGB regressor. So these are well-known mo models. So I just wanted to see how uh, the values or how accuracy, the accuracy might vary. So the thing I did was, uh, okay. Uh, yes, hi, Herod. Can you can you hi. get back to uh, the categorical uh, pre-processing? Why uh, oh. that uh, get here? Done? Yeah. Here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're gonna need numerical values when you're trying to uh, predict uh, when you try to fit it in your model. So it doesn't work for categorical values, at least for these models. So, so we are converting uh, categorical uh, data to uh, numerical values. Yes, but like let's say, uh, for example, uh, we're gonna see it on the next example. But let's just assume uh, you're gonna you're trying to assess how many patients have been uh, uh, have returned to your hospital that has uh, diabetes in their system in their blood, right? So. Uh, so if they have returned it, the answer may be yes, right? And if they have not returned it, the answer may be no, right? So instead, when you are trying to uh, fit it in your model, the model is going to expect a number. So get dummies uh, only does. So it's going to give zero for no and one for yes. So it does. it's not going to change its value, but it's just, uh, converting it to numerical values, which is important and necessary. 
Yeah, I see. It's it's easy for uh, maybe two two types of values. But what about uh, if the the value is? Uh, uh, yeah, um, it will assign it. Yeah, it will assign it automatically with assign. So, if you have more than ten, uh, I think if you have more than ten categories, it's not advised to use uh, get dummies. But the hot key encoder is more suitable for that. So yeah. There are ways, but uh, you need to change them. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you, Karen. Okay, thank okay. you. So, uh, okay, back to this. Uh, so, for the the two models, uh, so this is just a score or, or a validation score for random regressor and uh, for this XGB regressor. So. What I did was I wanted to see which number of estimator is best for each uh, model. So I just uh, did a for loop for each of these uh, estimator numbers and plotted the value. So as you can see, uh, for 100 estimators and for 200 estimators, the value or the score is the same. So I just went with 100, but for XGB regressor, as you can see, uh, 400, uh, for 200, it's much, much lesser for uh, than it is for 100. So just used these uh, parameters and trained the model and found, uh, and found this uh, error or the absolute mean error of each model and since this one is lower than this one, I just used this one, which is the uh, for this for the random regressor. Sorry, for the XGB regressor. So I used that model to uh, test or to train uh, my on my data, as you can see. And after that, just for the submission. Uh, on the so this is the model right that I used to train. I just fit, fitted x and y into it, so the model is fitted. After that, do the the prediction on your test data set. So for this data set, the score was zero point one four, which was good. So only fourteen percent error was here. Uh, so, any questions on this uh, example? Okay, Abraham. Uh, okay. With this question again, uh, Abraham, you can open your mic. I I kind of lost uh, what you did after after uh, pre-processing the ca the categorical data earlier. I was I was getting stuck there and uh, okay here okay data. so you mean here? I think yeah. the categorical data was here. Yeah, yeah, here after this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So just uh, so you're gonna predict the sale price, right? So you're trying to. Come up with you. So you're gonna have your trains data set. Your your train that data set has a sale price that you are going to train it on, and the attributes, right, or the features. So just uh, assign y to the sale price, which is what you are trying to find or predict for the test data set, and x to the attributes or the features. So after that, just split your data set into X and Y. And for this example, I used the test size uh, to be 20% and the 80% is going to be used for uh, training. So this is just uh, something I did. Something I did just to have, just to yeah. see how different, yes. Uh, you were uh, breaking up. I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Which part do you want me to go back to? Uh, 
Uh, can you uh, get back to the X, uh, X attribute part? Yeah, yeah, selling price. Yeah, so X is uh, the attributes or the features, and Y is just what you are trying to predict or the test. So the uh, test, the yeah. asset doesn't have a sale price, right? So that's what you are trying to do uh, to predict. So that's a Y, and for the X, it's just the attributes or the features. So after that, um, just uh, split your data set into uh, train and test or validate. Val means validation. That's going to be used for validation purposes. So uh, split your X and Y data set into uh, X train, X validate, uh, Y train and Y validate. So the test size uh, for this example is 20%. 0 0.2 means 20 percent so uh, this means the training size is 80 percent so 80 percent of your uh, data set is going to be used to train your model and 20 percent of your, your data set is going to be used for uh, testing or validation purpose so yeah so this function is just here, uh, just to find the best estimate, the number of estimators. Uh, that's best. We, uh, that's best for the model. So we have two models: the random forest regressor and the uh, XGB regressor. So this is the plot for the number of uh, estimators versus the error or the uh, score, right? So this is just the cross validation score. So as you can see, um, 100 is optimal because you don't see any change for uh, after that. Uh, but for the XGB regressor, uh, you can see that 200 is more optimal than the rest. So uh, just use these parameters and uh, initiate your mo model, X, uh, both models. You don't need to do this. It's just a way to show how different they react. Uh, so here, uh, here is the result for the random regressor. Uh, regressor. So yes, you can see the error for this is uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars. So uh, what this means is, since we are predicting the selling price, uh, what this value means is at uh, the on average uh, our prediction is off by this much so our our prediction uh, there is always some uh, error in any kind of prediction there is no 100 percent prediction so then uh, the error for this uh, prediction is uh, 14967 dollars but for the the X uh, GB reverser, it's uh, bitless, which is uh, 40,538. So since this one is uh, more accurate, let's use this uh, data set, um, uh, this mo model to train our on our test uh, data set. So this is uh, pretty much it. Uh, so Thank, As you, I, thank you so much, Carol. Uh, now I understand it perfectly. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, you're welcome. Any other questions, or should we move? Or uh, is it clear? If it is uh, clear, we don't need to you see another example. No, this example is clear for me. Okay, thank you, Abraham. So for the rest, if if it is clear, you can uh, we can just end the session or if you want we can just uh, take a look at another example for the diabetes so thumbs up if it is clear and uh, uh, if you want to see another example we can so it's two versus Okay, what about Nadia and Matthias? We are just six here, so let, let's contribute. Matthias?
Okay, no idea. I mean, if you have a time, like, I would wish if you can repeat this, what you have done right now. Uh, okay. And instead it's of repeating not, it, you do have time. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's not a matter of uh, time, but uh, let's see another example, and maybe it makes it, uh, it's, it becomes more clear. Okay. Okay, so you can see my screen, right? Uh, so for this example, uh, what it is, is, um, so let me show you the data set. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. So for this uh, project, the data is about you are given the property of every uh, patient that has uh, diabetes and this is just to find if they have uh, so uh, for the data set there is a readmission so have they have they been readmitted or not so what you are trying to predict is given the uh, data about a certain patient, uh, you're gonna find if that person is going to be readmitted or not. So you have around 50 attributes of each patient. And uh, la lastly, you have uh, readmission. So have they re been readmitted, readmitted or not is what we're trying to find. So you have, uh, so, the encounter ID and the patient number may not be that relevant when trying to find out if a patient has been readmitted or not, right? Because it's not based on that. Um, so the race, the gender, the age, the weight, uh, so admission type ID, discharge, so uh, the time in a hospital and payer code, medical specialty. So, this is just uh, the raw data, right? So I, I think you have already seen that most of the attributes are not that necessary to predict if a patient is going to come back or not, right? So this is what we mean by uh, selecting the features, the appropriate features. So you're going to have to need uh, to understand the data away. And after that, the data pre-processing is just uh, handling the null values, uh, make them standard. This is for, as I've told you earlier, uh, to normalize them, right? Because uh, some columns might have, might be measured in uh, thousands, while others are just measured in uh, uh, zero point something, right? So this, uh, this, difference in value might uh, might have an effect on your uh, prediction. So you're gonna need to normalize them or standardize them. So, uh, and the other thing is, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, handling the categorical values, you might use uh, one hot key encoder, uh, label encoder or others, or as uh, earlier uh, that we saw from the uh, pandas or pandas yeah. so this is the data set uh, i think i have already seen this one so the number of missing values is 7.35 uh, which is a lot um, so because uh, the number of uh, data is 101,766 uh, but uh, like we're gonna drop the accesses or uh, the columns that have a missing value 
greater than 30%. So this is just uh, like a best practice to do because if a Coleman has a missing value that is more than 30% as compared to the whole value, uh, like imputing it is not going to be fair and it's going to have a bias. So that's why we dropped this uh, because you cannot just guess or impute someone weight uh, depending on other uh, things. So yeah, that's why. So, but for this one, uh, we just used uh, forward fill and uh, for all actually forward fill. So forward fill and backward fill are also methods of imputing non-values, just forward fill means for adding uh, what's been there on the previous data. So it's going to fill it forward and the backward means just the reverse. So after this, after cleaning it, uh, so you can see here it's all uh, cleaned. So here you can see there are some categorical values which need, which we need to change. So um, let me see. Yeah, so here uh, we used a label encoder, which is just to change the categorical values into numerical values. So these are the categorical uh, columns that are found in the um, data set. So gender, race, were limited, uh, like the medication, the changes and everything, insulin type and everything. So we just need to change these values, these categorical values into numerical values. So here we used uh, the label encoder. So I've, as I mentioned, there are also other encoding types you can use. Uh, so yeah, so this is just, uh, the way the cleaning. So after that, uh, the why is, uh, as I've mentioned, what we are trying to predict, which is readmitted column and the rest are for X, right? So here uh, is just to select the features. Uh, so the selected features here are this. Uh, so discharge or disposition ID, uh, time in hospital, number of medication, uh, number out patients, the emergency. So these are the type of features that we are going to use. So in order to select this, you need to understand the data and understand the business. So that's what I meant by understanding the data and understanding the business objectives are very important uh, when trying to do ML uh, projects or ML engineering projects. So yeah, uh, that's it for the EDA or the data cleaning. Are there any questions before mo moving on the data mo modeling? Or am I moving fast? Okay. So um, moving to the data modeling. So it's not a lot because most of the, the jobs were done on the uh, cleaning process. So uh, just load load the data. So here you can see that uh, zero, uh, zero means uh, they have not been admitted. One means they have been admitted and three means from the data set, you're gonna see that uh, they have not been followed, I guess, yeah. So you need to see the data for this one. So yeah, just uh, split the training test as we have did uh, earlier. So for this uh, project, uh, the test size is also uh, 20%, but since some of the uh, values have a wide range of difference in value, we used uh, the mean max scalar. So for this, uh, the normalizer, for this normalizer, we're gonna find the minimum and the maximum value of the uh, X-train value, and we're gonna impute it or transform the X-train and the X-test value based on this uh, 
min max value. So it's going to be scaled. So this is the scaled result of this uh, of the uh, test X train data sets. So yeah, uh, for this project we used a random forest classifier. So just fit the two uh, X train and X uh, Y train values uh, or data into the model. And this is just to see the uh, current. Yes, I am fast, right? Sorry, sorry. Uh, can you yeah. repeat the above uh, part? Uh, Which one? Here, uh, the mean max scalar. The mean max, uh, what's the point of doing that? OK, uh, so as I have explained earlier, so some values might have, uh, so let's say, uh, some values may, may be uh, measured in uh, 0. Point something, right, or in percents. So uh, when you have one column that is just a measure of uh, percent, which is 0. Point something, 0. Point something. And on the other column, you might have a value of um, a value, yeah, that's measured in tens of thousand or hundreds of thousand, right? So this uh, difference in value need to be addressed. So they need to be to come to a similar uh, ground. So that's why you use uh, mean max scalar or normalizers so i think you have uh, if you have studied statistics you have seen uh normalization right abraham uh i actually uh, uh i don't uh, study statistics maybe that's why it's uh, no uh, not study but uh, in the university uh, it's a common force so maybe uh you have seen it okay so but uh, anyways yeah, it's okay. You 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 can check. Um, but it's just the basic thing is just to normalize the value into a value from zero to one, right? So because uh, the data sets uh, don't have that much of a difference between the values. So that's the purpose of not normalizing a data. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. So this is just the average uh, cross validation score that is used on uh, that is uh, trained on the uh, model after it's fitted. So if we are happy with this score, we can move on to the test uh, or, or predicting the test uh, the data set. So we predict is um, just uh, predicting. This is the model, right? So that predict on the X uh, test data set. So uh, just this is just to see uh, our score. So the score or the accuracy of this model is just 0 0.5 or 52 percent. So uh, depending on this, the model that we have built right now, uh, only we can uh, we are only right. 52 out of 100 times. So it's not a good model, right? But the earlier uh, was 14% uh, error. So which means out of 100, uh, 86 of our prediction are right. So that's how you validate your, uh, validate your score or validate your mo model. So if you are not happy with your model, you're going to fine tune uh, depending on your parameters, right? So you have to find some para parameters here. So uh, no, this one, uh, on the previous one, we have defined some parameters. So you can define some parameters here and fine tune them according to that. So uh, any questions, everyone? Only Abraham is <laughs> participating. So you guys, can you participate and tell me uh, if there's any question because, uh, okay. Uh, what about the ladies? Okay. <laughs> so everyone seems to be happy with it. So uh, no questions. Okay, Matthews.
Um, yes, you're going to have to build a model and train and test. Uh, you might not need to train uh, to test your the, your model, but the, you need to find the k-min value. So it's a model too. But uh, that the reason that I wanted to have this session and just wind it, widen it a bit was just to uh, show you because you're going to be using it in the future. But yes, you're going to need to use the model. Uh, you're going to have to train a model. Any other question? Okay. Okay, if it's not, let me just... Uh, Kerut. Yes. Uh, can you share the, the the code you are working right now? Also the slides. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, push them uh, to a Git repo and share the link okay, for the thank reports. You. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.